muscles are more metabolically active than fat, which means they require more energy to maintain which means they're gonna burn more calories. The more that you have, the more calories you're gonna burn. What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to the Macro Hour with Nikki Sack, co-founder and brand personality of Warrior Babe, where we talk about mindset, methodologies, and tactics that will help you lose body fat, build muscle, be strong, and feel insanely confident. I am your host, Nikki Stott, and welcome, you guys, to today's episode, episode number 21, all about how to increase every aspect of your daily energy expenditure. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Today's going to be a good one, y'all. We're going to talk about BMR. We're going to talk about NEAT. We're going to po- talk about TEF. We're going to talk about EAT. We're going to talk about TDEE. You probably have heard these topics. You probably have maybe seen people talk about it in this space. But today, I'm going to break down each one. And most importantly, I'm going to teach you guys how you can increase each one to help you achieve your fat loss goals, okay? And then I'm also going to teach you guys how you can measure each one of these. This is going to be a good podcast, y'all. I'm excited to dive into it. So, I mean, let's just dive right into it. Let's talk about these five key components of energy expenditure, that being BMR, NEAT, TEF, EAT. When I say EAT, I ain't talking about EAT food, like you eat some food. I'm talking about EAT. I'll dive into that in a bit. And TDEE. And I'm going to explore how you guys can increase each one to optimize your fat loss results. And I'm going to help you guys know how you can measure each one of these too. So we're going to get a little scientific y. We're going to dive into how each of these correlate to your overall, you know, journey, how you can increase all of them. And, you know, While exercise is certainly important for fat loss, guys, the human body actually burns calories in a variety of ways from, you know, the basic metabolic functions, everyday activities like walking and even digesting food. So that's what I'm going to dive into talking about to today. And so, yeah, let's let's just get to it. So let's first talk about BMR, which is your basal metabolic rate. And this is the amount of energy your body requires to carry out basic physiological functions while at rest, meaning things like breathing, circulating your blood, or regulating your body temperature, maintaining organ function, all of those things. So in other words, it's like the minimum amount of energy your body needs just to stay alive. And it actually accounts for majority of your total daily energy expenditure. In fact, it makes up as much as like 70% of your total daily energy expenditure. That means even if you were to lie in bed all day without moving, your body would still burn a significant number of calories to keep your vital organs functioning. All right. Now, the number of calories your body burns at rest totally varies from person to person based on factors like your age, your weight, your gender, your height, your body composition, all of those things. Like men tend to have higher BMRs than women and people with more muscle mass tend to have higher BMRs than those with less muscle mass. So like for me, for instance, I have significantly increased my BMR over the last so many years because I've increased my muscle mass. So I have a higher BMR because I have higher muscle mass than those that have less muscle mass. So that is a big way that you guys can increase your BMR. You can do it by increasing your muscle mass through strength training. And so like I've mentioned this previously in in other podcasts before, but like muscles are more metabolically active than fat, which means they require more energy to maintain which means they're gonna burn more calories. The more that you have, the more calories you're gonna burn. And the more that you increase your natural BMR from where you started out, say, if I was to measure this, like when I first started eight years ago, I would probably be somewhere around like 1300 calories for uh, for for my nat from just a BMR me- basal metabolic rate all of the things minimum amount of energy your body needs just to survive. I've probably increased that up to at least maybe 1600 as a baseline flat, right? Over these years of of strength training. So like 
because my muscles are more bet- metabolically active than fat, it means that they require more energy to maintain, meaning that that number has increased because of the more muscle mass that I have. So the more muscle you have, the higher your BMR will be. Um, and in addition to just regular exercise can also help boost your BMR, even when you're at rest. All right. So in summary, all in all, all the things around BMR here, it's the amount of energy your body burns at rest. And it accounts for majority of your total daily energy expenditure. And then increasing your muscle mass through strength training can help to boost your BMR, which can ultimately help with fat loss. All right, so that's all things BMR. So, and I'm gonna talk about how you guys can measure this in in a little bit. Let me just get through all of the five first, then we're gonna dive into that. Um, So the second one is your NEAT, which is your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So this refers to the energy that your body burns through non-exercise activities, like, for example, fidgeting, or for example, standing or walking. So essentially like NEAT, NEAT, is the energy expenditure that happens outside of your planned exercise for the day. And this too, just like BMR, it significantly varies person to person based on factors like your occupation, your lifestyle, and your environment. So for example, Someone who has a sedentary office job may have a much lower NEAT than someone with a more physically demanding job, like someone that's a hairdresser who's on their feet every single day, or someone that's a construction worker that's on their feet all day doing heavy labor, right? So here are some examples that you could increase your your NEAT on a daily basis. And it's just like making simple, small changes to your daily habits. So here are some ideas. Here are some examples. Um, and you probably have heard this. Uh, you know, people talk about this too in in the space, or people that you follow on Instagram, or yada yada yada, all the, all those shit. So just like the ten k step thing, that's naturally increasing your need. Um, taking the stairs instead of taking the elevator, parking further from your destination so that you have more to walk. Right? Like for example, like I always park at the furthest it, unless it's raining in the furthest spot so that I have more walking to do, so that I have more steps to take. Um, Standing more often will help as well, using a standing desk at work or at home, Uh, doing household chores, right? Cleaning, gardening, washing the car, doing the laundry, walking all over the place, walking from your kid's room to grab their laundry to the uh, laundry room if it's far, right? That That's naturally going to just increase your NEAT. Um, taking frequent breaks throughout the day to get up from your desk, to go walk around, to go walk down the hallway. This, These are all things, again, simple changes, um, small changes that you can make to your daily habits that will increase your, your need. The idea though overall is to find ways to incorporate more movement into your daily routine. So over time, these small changes, you guys can totally add up to a significant increase in your energy expenditure daily. So that's neat. So to sum it up, it's your energy your body burns through non-exercise activities, and it can vary significantly from person to person. Um, And then making small changes to your daily habits and finding ways to incorporate more movement into your routine is going to increase your NEAT. And that's ultimately going to boost your total daily energy expenditure. All right. So that was number two. Number three is the thermic effect of food, or otherwise known as TEF. And so this refers to the energy that your body burns to digest and absorb and metabolize the food that you eat. So essentially, it's the energy cost of processing the food that you consume. Yes, your body, by the foods that you choose to eat, your body actually burns calories with that food. Um, did you? I, I, if you guys didn't know that, this is a cool thing to know, that your body, you know, it, your body burns energy, calories to digest, absorb, metabolize the food that you eat. And this can vary depending on the macronutrient consumption of your diet. So protein, for example, has a higher TEF than carbohydrates and fat. So this means that your body actually burns more energy, burns more calories to process protein than it does to process other macronutrients like carbohydrates and fats. Pretty cool, right? So 
to increase your TEF. What do you think I'm going to say? I'm going to say you focus on eating a diet that's high in protein. This is something that we preach inside of our Warrior Way programs. For example, your daily protein intake should match how much you weigh or there or if you're like 250 pounds, at least the goal weight of what you do want to weigh, right? So for example, if I weigh 150 pounds, I should be eating 150 grams of protein per day. And that will increase the overall energy cost of digesting the food and boost your total daily energy expenditure. Pretty cool, right? Just by eating protein. Now, It's important to note, though, that the increase in TEF from eating a high protein diet, that's relatively small, you guys, compared to other factors that will contribute like higher overall likelihood of you increasing your daily energy expenditure like exercise. Okay, so don't just think, oh, I'm going to eat a high protein diet and I'm going to get the results that I want. I'm going to increase my daily energy expenditure. No, like nothing is going to contribute as much as increasing your daily energy expenditure than exercise well, okay? And it's also worth noting too, even though that I just said that, you know, there's positives uh, to increasing your TEF by eating protein, there's also negatives, uh, meaning that they actually require less energy to digest than they provide. So this is typically the case like with high processed foods that are like high in fat and sugar. These types of foods can actually contribute to overall weight gain because they don't burn as many calories during digestion. So like I just mentioned that protein can increase, um, you know, by how many how many calories your body is burning because it uses energy to digest. Well, there are some things like processed foods and things that are high in sugar that actually contribute to a negative effect of TEF um, because they don't burn as many calories during digestion. All right. So. That's CEF. So in summary, it's the energy that your body burns to digest, absorb, and metabolize the food that you eat. So eating a diet that's high in protein can increase your TEF and can boost your total daily energy expenditure. But like I said, it's relatively small. Like That happening is relatively small compared to other factors like exercise and things I previously talked about. Um, So that's all things TEF. Now let's get into number four, which is EAT. And like I said, not like eating food. I mean, we we just talked about that there in the previous one, but EAT is your exercise activity thermogenesis. So this refers to to the energy that your body burns during planned exercise, including both aerobic and resistance training. So during exercise, your body uses energy to power your muscles. And this energy expenditure can vary though, depending on the type and intensity of the exercise. So to increase your EAT, This can be done by increasing the frequency, the intensity, or the duration of your workouts. So like incorporating resistance training can can be an effective way to increase your EAT by building more muscle mass, which in turn then increases your BMR like I already spoke to. And it's also worth noting too that while exercise can be an effective way to increase your energy expenditure and promote fat loss, it's not the only factor to consider you guys. So everything I'm talking here is not the only factor to consider. Other factors like diet, like sleep, like managing your stress, these are all really important and significant impact to overall health and your weight and to the way that you are optimizing the results that you want to see with your body. All right, so in summary, really short and sweet, but it explains itself. EAT refers to the energy that your body burns during planned exercise. And to increase your EAT can be done by increasing the frequency, intensity, the duration of your workout. So like work your workout, like put some intensity behind it, challenge yourself, right? Um, As well as incorporating resistance training to build more muscle. Hey, hey, just want to drop a huge appreciation to you guys listening to the show. It means a lot. I hope you guys are enjoying it and there's so much more to come with it. If you are enjoying it, hit the subscribe button. I'd appreciate that tons. And also it would help this podcast reach others who need to hear these messages too. Thanks so much, guys. Let's get back to the show. Now, the last and final one, T-D-E-E. This is the one that you probably have heard, you know, throughout listening to people on social media that are in the space of fitness, that is your total daily energy expenditure. This is all the things I'm talking about. So it refers to the total amount of energy your body burns in a day. This includes everything that was just mentioned, your BMR, your NEAT, your TEF, and your EAT. It's essentially the total number of calories you need to maintain your current weight based on your activity level and other factors. So understanding this and like, 
calculating this for you can be super helpful to determine how many calories you need to eat in a day to lose, maintain, or gain weight. Um, and there's several, like, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend doing the online calculators, but there are several of them that can help you estimate this. I would work very closely with a professional to dial it in. It's going to save you time. Check out Warrior Babe. Links are below this podcast. You can watch a free 15 minute training that I put on, like all things macronutrients, or you can apply straight to the program, talk to one of our team members, and see if it's a good fit for you to join inside of our community. But anyway, that's all going to be based on off of your age, your gender, your height, weight, your activity level. So, like, while calculators will give you an estimate, a professional will give you a more precise number to be able to then work from to generate the results that you want. Okay. So, you know, typically if you are trying to calculate this, to create a calorie deficit, you consume more fewer calories than your TDEE, right? If you're trying to lose fat. So this deficit can come from a combination of like diet and exercise. So for example, you could reduce your calorie intake by 500 calories per day and increase your exercise to burn an additional 500 calories per day for a total deficit of a thousand calories per day. This would be a result in a weight loss of like one to two pounds per week. And that's just like a general, very broad example. Um, but like more muscle mass you have to your body, increasing your BMR is going to make you burn more calories on a daily basis. So don't get hung up on that example. That's why I would recommend just working closely with a professional where they can deep dive into this with you and for you and then make adjustments along the way. Okay, so to increase your TDEE, we just briefly touched on it. You focus on increasing your activity level, including both, you know, planned exercise, non-exercise activities like your NEAT, uh, building more muscle mass through strength training, which is going to help increase your BMR. Um, all of these things will boost and increase your TDEE. So that's a summary of TDEE. That's your total daily energy expenditure. It's like the total amount of energy your body burns in a day and includes all of the other points that I touched on. Okay, you guys, so I bet now, at this point in the podcast, you're wondering how to measure each of these. So let's dive into it. And like, I wanna just like put this up front that if you're gonna try and put these into action by you measuring them by yourself, when you're not a professional in this space, and like you have a career and a lifestyle and you're responsible for so many things, it's gonna be really hard for you to nail this down. Um, that's why I would recommend like working with a professional who can be more precise with this information, who can, who knows what to look at, who knows what to ask, who then will be able to work and adjust things for you. Um, so that will put you on the right path for the things that you need to be doing to get the results that you want. Um, so first let's dive into BMR, which was the basal metabolic rate. So this is this involves measuring the amount of like oxygen that you consume and the amount of carbon dioxide you produce while resting. So it's typically done in like a lab or clinical setting. However, there's like equations that can be used to estimate your BMR, like figuring out what your age, your sex, your height, and your weight are, right? Like you've probably seen calculators online that can estimate what your BMR is. Um, and that's good, but again, like to get a little bit more precise, um, you'll be able to work with, you can work with a professional who can know these things and look at your body composition and be like, oh, this person has more muscle mass than fat. So I need to factor that in. She probably has a higher BMR or, you know, this person has less muscle mass, and more fat. So they probably have a little bit of a lower BMR. So those are some things that would factor into measuring your BMR, but it's typically done in a, in a lab or like a clinical setting. Um, next one is your NEAT, the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So this one's a little bit more difficult to measure directly because it refers to the energy you expend through your everyday activities like walking, standing, fidgeting, um, all that jazz. So there are some tools that can help estimate your NEAT, just like there's tools that can help estimate your BMR. Um, so just like activity tractors that monitor your steps or like, you know, your Apple Watch dings if you've been sitting for too long. So there's things like that. But outside of it, it's it's difficult to measure directly. So again, like a professional will be able to ask like, do you have a sedentary job? Do you, are you more demand? Do you have a more demanding job? Like they'll be able to understand by gathering that information from you where your NEAT would be. Um, the next one is a thermic effect of food. So this is typically 
uh, estimated as a percentage of the calories that you consume. So, you know, different macronutrients have different TEF values, like protein, fats, and carbs have different TEF values. So for example, protein we know has um, a TEF of around like 20 to 30%, meaning your body burns 20 to 30% of calories from protein during digestion. However, guys, it's like difficult to measure TEF directly because it's going to involve measuring the amount of energy your body experiences bends during digestion and metabolism. So like, could your, is your body, it, it's a rough estimate that it's doing 20 to 30%, but is it really? And then we know that there's a positive effect protein, but there's also negative effects. So if you're eating more processed foods uh, with fats and sugars, then you probably have, you have a more negative effect with your TEF than you do a positive. So it's like trying to encompass all of those things. Um, so that's TEF. Now the next one to measure, or how you can measure is your EAT. This is typically estimated based on like the type intensity and the duration of your exercise so people typically will measure this based off of their like their heart rate monitor or like their activity tracker to estimate the number of calories you burn during workout however i need to put this plug in here you guys these estimates they're not entirely accurate they're based off like generalized equations and they don't take into account individual differences in everybody's metabolism. Everybody is completely different. Everybody has completely different metabolisms and it doesn't take into account your individual metabolism and other factors, okay? But these, again, are like rough estimates of like, are you working your workout? Are you challenging yourself? Is your heart rate high? Then we can get an idea of where your EAT will be. So it's, again, typically based off of the type, intensity, and duration of your exercise. Um, and last one is a TDEE. So this one, you know, as a lead to, to your BMR, it's also like estimated you can do it with online calculators or you can have a professional have a more precise information gathering all of these things mentioned above to understand exactly where you may be with how many calories you need to consume to maintain, to, uh, to lose or to gain weight. So that's your TDE, your total daily energy expenditure. And that's how it's, it's honestly is measured through um, more advanced methods like like that involve you consuming water with isotopes and then measuring the rate of carbon dioxide production to determine your energy expenditure. Like it's like that in depth. So, you know, these are a little bit, these can be done more inside of um, research settings, inside of labs, inside of clinical settings, but there's some ways to have, there's tons of things to be able to have an estimate and you can do that but there's professionals in the space that will be able to have a more accurate assessment of where you're at and what you need to get the results that you want, okay? So in conclusion of everything, you guys, that we just talked about, understanding the different components of energy expenditure, BMR, NEAT, TEF, TDE, and EAT. It's crucial for anyone, you guys, that if you're trying to optimize your fat loss, by understanding the role of each of these and how to increase it, um, increase them, you know, you can create a comprehensive understanding for maximizing your calorie burn and achieving your overall fat loss goals and getting to the composition that you want to see with your body. Um, if you don't know where to start with this and like, we did get a little sciencey here and I explained a lot. Check out Warrior Babe. Okay, we got you there on all of these specifics. Follow our guidance for you and then just do the work. You're gonna get the results. So check it out. Apply using the links below this video. And two, it guys, it's important to note that what I just spoke about, like all of the things, exercise, increasing your energy expenditure, it's all important for fat loss, but they're just one piece of the puzzle. So like having a balanced approach that includes attention to all other factors like your sleep, your stress management, your diets, these are all crucial for optimal results. Not just how many calories can you burn in a day through all of these things. Not man, how are you eating? How's your sleep? How's your stress management? Are you doing that consistently? Are you paying attention to that kind of stuff? That's all super, super important to optimize your fat loss results. Okay, you guys? I hope you enjoyed that podcast. That was fun to speak to. I enjoyed alluding to all of those specific you know, components of how to increase your overall daily energy expenditure. There's a multitude of ways that you could do it, but most importantly, you wanna make sure you're eating right, you're getting enough sleep, you're managing your stress, and you're doing all of those things. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next episode.
Real quick, the only ask I could ever have of you guys is to help spread the word so we can help more women lose body fat, build muscle, reach their goals, and feel insanely confident. And the only way we can do that is if you rate, review, and share this podcast. So the single thing I ask for you to do is if you could leave a review. It will take you 10 seconds, and it will mean the absolute world to me and may change the world of someone else.